Tithing was a kind of income tax for the ancient state of Israel and was a form of taxation crafted for an agricultural and theocratic state where the animal sacrifices of the law and those who administered them were thereby provided for. We are not in ancient Israel. We are not in a completely agricultural economy. We are not living in a theocratic state. Tithes cannot go to support the Levites, since there are no Levites presently serving at any temple. So there is not only no mandate in the New Testament for Gentiles to tithe, our Lord's words in Luke chapter 11 verse 42 and Matthew chapter 23 verse 23 are really not supportive of tithing, beyond the fact that he was addressing people under the law at that time who were indeed responsible to carry out the law. Rather, our Lord's point is that justice, mercy, faith and the love of God are the really important things, rather than making a show of tithing insignificant things as the Pharisees were doing. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice and acknowledgement of God, rather than burnt offerings. Hosea chapter 6 verse 6 So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. Matthew chapter 22 verse 21 Nowhere in Scripture are churches or church members required to tithe. In fact, the whole concept of church membership is modern and also not biblical. Tithing was a sort of income tax, which was prescribed in Scripture for the ancient nation-state of Israel, which was a theocracy. The best modern, though unbiblical, example of this sort of thing was during the 18th century in the colonies, where some places like Virginia had a tax to support the official church, the Church of England, or nowadays, the Episcopal Church. Blessedly, we are no longer under that yoke. We are free to attend any church we wish, and we are free to give as much as we like or nothing at all. Clearly a stingy attitude toward the organization, which is feeding us spiritually, in those extremely rare cases where there is a teaching ministry which actually is feeding the congregation spiritually, would not be a godly one. But the idea that 10% is the magic number for us today is completely unjustified and not supportable through Scripture. God loves a gracious giver. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9 7. And it is better to give than to receive. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20 verse 35. However, the idea that 10% is blessed while less is insufficient and unacceptable is absolutely wrong. And if that notion ever comes from someone in an official capacity, it is hard to see how it would not be an example of evil greed. Christians should give if they are motivated to give, and 10% for someone who is only making ends meet is more than 10% for someone who is awash with resources. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on. Luke chapter 21 verse 2 through 4 It would be wrong to make the hard-pressed person feel bad in the least for not being able to meet this false standard. And on the other side of the coin, many are blessed with abundant wealth precisely so that they may exercise their gift of giving. And it would be wrong to suggest to them that when they hit 10%, they have done all they ought to do. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In this way they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. 1 Timothy 6, 17-19 If it is giving that is your spiritual gift, then give generously. Romans chapter 12, verse 8 Tithing is not required for believers today, and it's not prohibited. It's not prohibited to give everything, let alone 10%, but that would be incredibly foolish for most people in most circumstances. As Paul says very clearly, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have, 2 Corinthians 8.12.
If a person has nothing to give, then nothing can be given. And if a person takes food out of their family's mouth, as opposed to easily disposable income, that verges on being worse than an infidel, 1 Timothy 5, 8. Even for those who have, like the Corinthians, more than enough income to give comfortably, and who have, like the Corinthians, already pledged some of that money, Paul tells them to set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income week by week. No one is expected to cut into the flesh and bone of their budget to the detriment of their family's needs. So tithing for believers today is not a biblical requirement, and it's not wrong to do it, unless a person assumes that there is some magic in the 10% figure and that this will bring magical blessing from God. Helping our brothers and sisters in Christ who are genuinely in need is a wonderful thing. Giving to some organization or church is not necessarily giving to the Lord in this way, however, because organizations and churches do not necessarily channel that money to people in need. For the most part, tithing as it is practiced today is a gimmick to get people in need to give much more than they can or should to organizations and churches which have no real need of it and who are not using it in a particularly godly way in any case. It's not wrong to tithe, but it is wrong to assume that one is following a biblical mandate in doing so. There is no such mandate for believers today, and what obtained in ancient Israel is different from what passes for tithing today. Abraham gave 10% of the spoils from the victory he won to Melchizedek, that is true. But there are a couple of things to notice about that. First, if Abraham had not given the 10%, he would have been no richer and no poorer, because he gave everything else, apart from the share that fell to his allies, back to the king of Sodom.